Hi everyone, my name is Greg and welcome to this accessory pack video on the Laser Channel. Today I'm going to feature two accessories for this Atom Stack X20 Pro. One is going to be a camera system connected and calibrated within Lightburn software and the other item is this new style of honeycomb also offered by Atom Stack. Let's take a closer look at the machine and the accessories that I'll be covering in this video, starting with the laser machine. This is the Atom Stack X20 Pro featuring a powerful 20 watt laser module. Let's take a look at this first accessory. This camera system, the AC1 by Atom Stack, features a high quality, high resolution camera that's going to be perfect for this type of an application. I call this a camera system because not only is it the camera, but it is this whole mounting boom system. It starts out with a nice clamp that I have it currently clamped onto the machine, and these boom arms are fully adjustable up in this section. And finishing things off on the mounting system is this nice swivel ball end to get the camera pointed in just the perfect direction to get a nice full view of the work area. The other cool accessory that we'll be taking a look today is this honeycomb. This is the F3 honeycomb by Atom Stack. And this new style honeycomb, I've nicknamed it shark tooth honeycomb. And that's because, well, when I look at it, it looks like rows and rows of shark's teeth. This stuff is pretty neat. It features an all aluminum construction, making it very easy to wash to get any of that smoke residue off from all of the projects that we do. The other really cool thing that it has is it is extendable. I can take a second honeycomb bed here, a shark tooth honeycomb bed, and it will directly bolt right onto the end, making it seamless honeycomb that is twice the width. It's now time to get the camera system set up in Lightburn software. And to start things off, I made sure that this camera system is securely clamped down to my laser machine. I also made sure that the camera is positioned roughly in the middle of the work area. Following the Lightburn setup process, there's a couple things that we'll need. The first thing that I'll need is to print out this polka dot test pattern. I printed this out as full size and not as a borderless print. We'll also see that I've attached it to this piece of cardboard. As a part of the calibration process, the software will have the laser do a test engraving out here and we'll be doing that a little bit later on in the video. I like to use black poster board from the Dollar Tree. It's inexpensive and the Dollar Tree poster board has this white core to it. So all I need to do is lightly engrave the top surface to reveal this nice high contrast white marking underneath. I recommend finding the engraving settings first before starting the setup process for the camera. When I have some good settings to use off of this poster board, I take those settings and I write them on the back side of this polka dot pattern. Here's the size of the poster board that I'll be using when I place it underneath the laser machine. This is a full sheet of poster board. Let's jump into the computer and I'll take you through some of the key steps of the calibration with Lightburn software. We're in Lightburn and the first thing I'd like to do is go over to the camera tab. If you find that you don't have this camera tab, you can navigate over to window and just make sure that you have camera control checked on. Next, I'll look at the camera area here and I'm going to click this pop down menu and I'm looking for PH720, which is going to be, of course, the camera that's connected up to the machine. And already we'll see that I've got this tiny little preview window here showing that in fact, the, the camera is active, the computer found it, and we're ready to start the calibration and setup process. I can navigate to laser tools, and we're going to be looking at two items here, calibrate camera lens and calibrate camera alignment. This is a two-part camera setup process, starting with calibrate camera lens. And again, we're going to click that PH720, 
And here again, I've got another nice live view. This is a little bit larger. I'll see if I can grab the corner of this dialog box and make it a little bit bigger. And that made the screen here of the camera view a little bit larger. And now is the time to position the camera to make sure that it has a nice field of view of the work area. It's going to ask us what type of lens is on this camera. And the AC1 camera system, the lens is flat, so that is going to be a standard camera. If you have a camera that has uh, like a bowl-shaped lens to it, that is going to be a fisheye lens. And the software setup defaults to fisheye. And of course, we have that nice flat lens on this AC1, so I'm going to select there. And I'm ready to click Next. And this is going to take us through step-by-step step on where to move this polka dot test pattern. And here, when we read through this, we're going to move the test card around to multiple different spots. And they want us to have a score of 0.3 or less. And this is gonna make sense after we do the first uh, capture image. So all I need to do here is deselect the honeycomb check is enabled because there's no honeycomb in the area. And here's the reference image and it says place it directly in the center of the work area. And that's what I'm going to do. We'll also see here that this little black bar is this test image. And it's always going to show that it's going straight up towards the camera. I can now hit capture and it will go out and take a snapshot. And it says that this was a 0 0.08 score and we're looking for 0 0.3 or less. So this was great. And I can click next. And here we'll see the reference image is moving it down to the very bottom of the screen. And we'll see that it's really just at the very bottom. And I'm going to try and mimic that as best I can. That looks good. This matches this, and I'm ready to take another capture. It'll take that image, and again, I'm always looking at this score to make sure it's less than 0.3. And we'll continue this on, and it will just tell us where to move each of these test patterns here. That was the last capture I needed to do, and now I'm ready to align the camera. Rather than go into that alignment camera right away, I'm going to click Finish, and that's because I had to push my laser module out of the way to get all of the captures. So when I click on Finish here, I'll hit the Home button, and that way the machine and light burn know exactly where the laser module is, and that'll be important when we do the test engraving in just a minute here. I've carefully placed my black poster board in the engraving area of the machine. And in fact, I placed the tape that I was going to show you off to the side here. To keep the poster board in place, I just used some of this blue painter's tape to secure it down. Just two little pieces was all I needed. I can go and finish the calibration setup here by navigating back to laser tools and calibrate uh, camera alignment. And here it has a choice between a camera that's on the laser itself or a boom arm. And of course the boom arm style is the type that we have. I clicked on that and it wants to know uh, what type of camera and you guessed it, that PH720. Again, we've got this live view here. See if I can get anybody, yep. <laughs> Here we've got a dialog box and it looks like there's a lot of stuff, but there's actually a couple of areas where it repeats what it's already talking about. This top area here is just talking about putting that piece of material in here. And I've already talked about that. That's the black poster board that we're using that we're going to be doing the uh, engraving on. And we'll see what that looks like uh, off to the side over here. This is what Lightburn is going to want to engrave on that poster board. Um, the material thickness, I left that set at zero. And here's what it's going to use for the engraving process. And that is where I had that smaller test sheet from earlier. And I wrote those settings down on the back side here. So now it's very convenient for me to type in some speeds here. Uh, for my machine here with the 20 watt laser module, I can go 175 millimeters per second. Uh, the scale, 
we're going to leave that alone. That was part of the calibration process that we just did with all of these polka dots. Don't change that number. And the power level, I have 20%. And I can tell it to frame this out. And this is also why I use just a full sheet of this poster board. We'll see at the top here, it said it should be at least 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters or eight inches square. And as we can see, this is wanting to use the entire effective engraving area of the X20 Pro. This looks good. I'm ready to put some glasses on while it's doing the engraving and I'll catch you back in just a minute or two. This sample image has finished engraving and we're ready to continue on to the next step. In this next step, it's just asking us to move the laser module with these controls into an area where the camera can see all of the four test targets that were just engraved. And here we can see on the back part here, it's covering them up just a little bit. So I am going to index the laser module forward here a little bit until I have a very clear view of all four targets. Move those airlines and wires out of the way. This looks perfect. And step two in this process on this dialog box is to press the capture image. And here we can see it's just confirming that yes, we can see all four of the targets and I can click next. And here, what it wants us to do is zoom in on target number one. I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse and I scroll in as, as much as I can until the screen stops zooming in. And for click marker number one, marker number one, I'm going to go in the very center here and double click. And that place, this little red cross here, and we're going to zoom in on marker number two. And I'm going to go again in the center here. With that complete, I'll click on next. And we're all 100% done with the entire calibration for the AC1. It really only takes just a couple minutes to do from start to finish. So right now I'll place my hand in there and what we want to do is click on update overlay and that is going to put an overlay uh, inside the work area here and there's my hand. We'll see that I remove my hand out of there and we still have that image. So each time we change something in our work area and we want to update this overlay image from the camera, you guessed it, we just have to click on update overlay without my hand in there it now disappears. All these little scrap pieces I've been holding on to for weeks and months. I've been bugged a little bit to throw them out, but look at all this space here. I can make a little keychain project out of this. I can place that old piece in there and hit update. And there it is. And now I can scroll wheel in and this is gonna be really cool. I can draw a circle and I'm going to move this right up to the edge there. And in fact, I'm going to make this even a little bit larger so it just safely fits inside there. If I didn't have the camera system and I went to go frame this out, the camera path or the, excuse me, the laser module path would go out into this open area here where there's no work material. And I wouldn't ever really know how close my object edges were to the edge of the work material. But of course, as we can see with the camera system, we have the overlay of what I'm placing in the Lightburn software with the actual work material. I can't wait to start going through some of my scrap pieces of project material and with the camera system, I can get perfect alignment to utilize the rest of what normally would have been wasted space on this material. Here's the front side and we'll see that it's a nice clean cutout. There's no smoke residue and that's gonna be because of the nice powerful air assist kit. 
And the honeycomb contribution is when we flip this over and we look at the backside, there's absolutely no smoke residue staining on the backside. And when we look at this little cutout piece here, we'll see that there's only the tiniest little mark right there. And that would happen to be where one of the teeth of the shark tooth was resting. If this was honeycomb, we would kind of see that pattern sprinkled around the outside. When I was in the planning stages for this video to feature the camera system and this shark tooth honeycomb bed, I was really excited, but I was also honestly a little bit apprehensive on the calibration of the camera system with Lightburn software. I've worked with vision systems in the past on an industrial scale, and they can be very complicated and take a while to set up and calibrate successfully. But to my amazement, the setup and calibration was very easy following the steps in Lightburn software, and we got really awesome results with it. I had a lot of fun creating this content for you. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something from it, please consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, or ringing that notification bell. It helps the channel out, but more so, it's a really great way to connect content like this with like-minded people just like yourself. Until next time, learn, create, and share.